What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast, and happy friggin' new year. I'm so happy you guys are back with me for another year. I'm so happy to be here on this planet Earth and on this internet forum for another year. Again, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you all more than you know. Today, we are going to do a little year in review of the content, of the channel, of me. This is not going to be a traditional podcast episode. There is not going to be a ton of hyper-specific MLB The Show conversation. I mean, of course, we're going to touch on things. It's an MLB The Show podcast. But this is going to more be about what this channel accomplished, what this community accomplished, and what I could be better at moving forward. I... A couple things. I don't really set New Year's resolutions. I do think it's good every year kind of just to, like, audit yourself and stay super aware of, of you, whether that's in something like this, in content where it makes total sense, but really just your life. Audit your life. That doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could help you, of course, make some positive choices for yourself. Um, but we're, we're auditing here. Um, partially inspired by the fact that I have a performance review at work this week, uh, which happens every year, so it's not a big deal. I'm not expecting anything bad. But let's give ourselves a little performance review here. We're going to talk about the good of 2023, the not as good of 2023, where I can improve moving forward. And even though I don't set New Year's resolutions, and even though I don't really like attaching numbers to goals in this sense, in content sense, we are going to talk about a couple goals for 2024. We had an obvious goal. We'll start out here right quick. This is not part of the good, bad, and different, but we're going to start out by celebrating this. I did have one numerical goal for 2023, and it was to reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube so we could get monetized as a partner. That was less about the number and more about being a partner. Because of all of you, every single person who's watching on YouTube, who's listening on Apple Spotify, because of every single one of you, we doubled that number, just about. Finishing the year with like 1950 subscribers on YouTube. I could never fathom... I have a hair in my eye from my dog. I could never fathom doubling that number. I thought it would be a stretch to get to the number itself, yet here we are. So, before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this episode, a heartfelt sincere thank you thank you thank you you guys have no idea what all of this has meant to me just from I, again i've said from the beginning i'm not in this to make money i don't want this to be my career i love what i do for my career it will always be my career this is just fun to do on the side and if i can make a little money from it great because of all of you I'm able to make a significant or take a significant chunk out of my student loan payment every month. And I, listen, that's a big deal for me. So thank you for supporting. Continue to support. Like, subscribe. Let's get into the actual episode here. So everybody, that was a really long introduction. I'm sorry, but I was just kind of kind of riffing. So we're going to talk about some stuff here. There's really not going to be much going on in the background. So be it. This is my God Squad, by the way. So we're going to start with the good. Number one. Let's be honest. My own gameplay. I'm finishing 2023. And again, the game cycle's not over. But I'm finishing the calendar year 2023. With a ranked record of 131 and 31. That's 100 games over 500. That's a full 62 game season, by the way. 131 and 31. I've made World Series every season it's been possible. I have yet to play a ranked game in set six. I have taken a little bit of a break the last week or so. I'm coming back. No big deal. This season seems like it goes forever, I'm pretty sure, right? When does this season end? February 7th. I've got plenty of time. This is the season I'm going to try to make a thousand rating, by the way. That's going to be one of my goals. But that's not a 2024 goal. That's just a short-term goal. Um... So my own gameplay, I've made World Series every season, I'm 131 and 31, I've gotten multiple 12 and 0 event runs, and I've gone flawless 18 times, just in LB The Show 23, this year. 
You guys all know my goal is to get to a 20 flawless banner. I'm two away. We're going to do it in the next couple months. Don't worry. Another good thing. My content consistency in terms of how often I upload. Last week, notwithstanding, I told you guys ahead of time I was taking a little bit of a content vacation just for the week. I still gave you a podcast episode Call that consistency. Podcast on a break. Um, I have gotten so good at pre-recording for knowing when I'm going to be away on, on vacation or like away for a weekend or this and that. I have given you guys just about every week three YouTube videos, sometimes four. There was a period of time we were doing five a week. I think my sweet spot moving forward is going to be three to four a week. And I, I don't think that's something anybody can complain about. Um, I will say, at least for the next couple months, we are going to shoot for three videos a week. Just until 24 drops, or at least until the news cycle gets going. Whiteboard Wednesday, there will be one this week. I am not going to hold myself to a Whiteboard Wednesday every week during the off-season of the game. When the new game drops, we're back full, full steam ahead. But Whiteboard Wednesday, I've learned, I love it, and I know you guys like it. It requires a lot of creative energy just to think of, like, sometimes off-the-wall subjects we can, we can conquer on a Whiteboard. So because of that... Oh, excuse me, get my headphones here. Because of that, I kind of want to just take some time. I want to plot ahead. When things come up, we will certainly cover them on Whiteboard Wednesday. But I want to take Whiteboard Wednesday to another level. I want to have more fun with it. I want you guys to have more fun with it. So, they will be less frequent. Not gone. But I am not going to commit to an every single week Whiteboard Wednesday over the next few months. When the game's back, like I said, in 24, we got shit to talk about. We're in full steam ahead. But for now, just curbing it a little bit. It's not gone. Just taking a little bit of a step back. Um, another good thing that happened this year. Two great things, but it's in one bucket. I think I did fewer content creator interviews this year than I've done before. That's just anecdotal. I'd need to check the numbers. But we had two of the biggest guests, the two biggest guests in the history of the show, the podcast this year. And I think they are partially the reason for everything that's happened. We interviewed MLB The Show hero, folk legend, Shlomo Lippitz, nicest guy on earth, answered a random Instagram DM from me after, actually, he posted one of my TikToks on his Instagram story. Um, and, I mean, what a guy for an interview. If you guys didn't listen to that and you have no idea what I'm talking about, find that podcast episode. What a freaking guy. And then secondly, my top moment of 2023 for content was Mr. Bob Kendrick coming on the podcast. Um, truly like an actual humbling interview. He's become this kind of like baseball mega celebrity. That's not why it's humbling. My day job is interviewing athletes and coaches and sports figures. So that doesn't get to me. But... Just knowing what he means to this community and knowing the innovation he's helped bring to the game and the awareness that he's helped bring to the game. And just... He is a captivating storyteller, man. That interview did a lot of things. First of all, it was the highlight of my content year, like I said. Second of all, I think that helped me get noticed by SDS because Ramon followed me back. That's a win. Ramon follows me on Twitter, guys. Um, I got praise from the producer of Storylines. Uh, I don't do this for praise. If I get it, that's cool. But this was sweet. So shout out to you, Mr. Bob Kendrick. If you're listening, and I know that, I know you're too busy to probably listen, but shout out to you, Bob Kendrick. Uh, and the second thing I, uh, I said here, or the next thing I said here, I just alluded to, being, being noticed by SDS is pretty cool. I um, didn't get into this to get noticed by SDS. I didn't get into this to work with SDS. I didn't get into this to, and I never will be, by the way, a corporate shill for any company. That's just, you guys know how I roll. Another one of the... 
mixing it in here. Another one of the good things I think I do is that I'm very authentic. This is me. This is not performative. This is how I am in my everyday life. Um, and I think that resonates with people. I think, I think there is a niche of the internet that appreciates someone who's not high production, quick snappy edits, noises and backgrounds and this and like, we have our place for that. We have our fun with Whiteboard Wednesday, but when we get in this setting, it's just me and you guys talking. So because I'm so authentic, I will call it as I see it, good, bad, or otherwise. That's why I'll never be a corporate shill. But being recognized by SDS is super cool. I can't say what was discussed, but having productive conversations with SDS has been super cool. I am excited for what that could mean in the future. If it means anything, it might not. It might have been a one-time thing. But either way, to, to, to be invited to something, to have a seat at the table, was humbling. And that doesn't happen without you guys. So thank you for that. And then the, the last thing that I would say I did, I did well this year, and there might be others if you guys want to gas your boy up, put them in the comments, but I think some of the content I did this year was pretty innovative. Um, you know, 10 minute mailbag is not like an innovative concept, but it's not done in the MLB The Show community. I think I'm the only one that does it. Uh, a weekly podcast, you know, they're inside the show with, with Coogs and Scuffy, um, is around and they're great, but I'm pretty sure I might be the only true weekly one with like, that's been around for a bit of time. Um, and I hope more blossom. I don't want to be the only one. I don't, I don't. I think it's great if there's more voices in this community. But I'm proud of what I've done with this podcast. Um, Whiteboard Wednesday, ain't no shot anyone else is doing that in MLB The Show. And again, I welcome everyone to start doing it. But like, that was cool to start. And how to pitch with videos. So many people when we talk about doing debuts on YouTube just cut to the highlights. Or like, this is the pitch I put in play. This is the pitch I got the out on. I think... Learning how to pitch in MLB The Show is a differentiator between winning and losing. You can't just slug your way out of every game. And overall, I think I've performed pretty well in those how to pitch with videos. Mostly. Hal Newhouser, notwithstanding. Don't look back at that video. So I'm happy with the innovation that's occurred in this content. And a lot of that comes from you guys. Hey, I'd love to see you pitch with this pitcher. We make a video of them. Hey, this... this thought is is worth fleshing out a little more there's something here i see stuff in the comments all the time that give me inspiration for content moving forward and that's why i don't want want you guys to stop commenting keep going i might not be able to respond to everything and i might not be able to turn everything into something but so much of what happens on this channel is because you guys put a bug in my ear or a bug somewhere and eventually i get to it so i appreciate it Let's talk about some of the not as good. It's not all bad per se. It's just not as good. Number one, I streamed a lot less this year in 2023. And if I'm being honest, I don't see that changing. And that's not a bad thing, in my opinion, the not changing part. The bad part is that I was inconsistent and that I didn't always communicate that inconsistency. I work a lot. It's approaching my busy season again. Um, I have a fiance, I have a dog, I create YouTube content, like life's busy. And I'm not trying to say I'm the only busy person on planet earth. There are people far busier than I. But if you're looking at simple, like cost analysis or whatever, Twitch is not like worth it. Um, Twitch is great. To hang out with the homies. And that is why I will never completely stop streaming. Because the time spent with you guys in chat, whether it's 5 of you or 25 of you, is fun. We have a lot of fun when I'm live. Truly. At least I do. And I hope you guys do too. So, Twitch is not going anywhere. It's just going to happen less frequent. My goal is just to stream a few times a month. Two or three, maybe. Sometimes it might be five or six. Sometimes it might just be two. It's all going to depend on what's going on in my life, what's going on in my fiance's life. I'm getting married in October, so like the end of the year is going to be a little crazy. 
That's a future us problem, but just putting it out there. Um, YouTube's where it's at. I've really got a lot of momentum on YouTube in a way that I never got on Twitch. And that's fine. I think, I think YouTube is the more engaging platform anyway. So that's why Twitch is just taking some, some backseat. Again, not going away. I appreciate the value of being able to communicate with you guys in real time. And, and, and again, it's fun. But that's just what, what Twitch is doing right now. Uh, also, Ben, maybe this is, it just should fall under needs improvement. I am not a good editor. I'm just not. I know my skills. And I'm not paying someone to edit for me. At least not yet. I don't really like taking creative risks when editing because I don't know how they'll pan out. But also this kind of goes back to my authenticity where you guys, a lot of you just want the information or the, the, the gameplay or the con or whatever. You guys don't need the, the cool edits and the sound effects. and the, Like there are people who do that better than me. And they're great content creators. And if you guys want that type of content, you can go to those places. You come to me for a specific reason, and that's why I'm going to keep giving you what I give you. I do want to get better at editing because I think it's a skill to have. But that's just, that's just that. And what comes along with that, and this one definitely needs to improve, are my thumbnails. I don't think I create fantastic thumbnails. Again, I'm not very creative in terms of visual stimuli. I've learned a lot, both from seeing other people's thumbnails and trying to replicate them. And honestly, I work on a media team. I am close with our graphic designers. I'll ask them questions sometimes. Sometimes they don't understand why I'm asking said questions, but I'll ask them questions about Photoshop or about photos or this or that or the other thing. So I'm, gr I'm gradually picking up steam. And let me tell you, thumbnail from day one versus thumbnail now is like a totally different person. I've gotten better, gotten better. My voice is a little weird thing there, but I'd like to get better. And then another thing I was bad at, the last thing in my opinion that I was not great at was just balance. Like I, I have a very addictive personality, like very addictive. Um, not in like a bad way, like drugs or anything, but like just addictive. I'm a collector. I like to, I, I'm a completionist. Uh, in many ways, I'm a perfectionist. It's a, it's a character flaw. It's a good thing sometimes. It's a character flaw. So when I get immersed in something, it is hard to pull me away from it. And that is bad for my life. And that is bad for my future wife. That rhymes. It's, I'm a rapper. Um, there are times when I can be more present. And need to be and should be more present. So I'm going to work on that in 2024. That might mean less hours spent playing the game. That will not mean less content from me, but just less hours spent playing the game. Just trying to be a good partner, husband, friend, etc. I think everyone can strive to do that. Even if you're good at it, you can be better at it. So that's that. In terms of other things I need to improve on. I want to get better at Twitter. Is that a thing people say? X, Elon.com. Um, I want to be more engaging. I want to be a more thought-provoking person in the community. I want to use that as my real-time communication with you guys when Twitch is not going to be up there. Twitter is such an on-the-go type of thing that I want to get better at it. And that it's easy to get better at it. But, like, I, I want to use that as a better form of communication. I am terrible at, like, posting daily videos on there that I've made. I am bad at... Uh, honestly... And I feel shitty about this because I know it. I'm terrible at answering replies. Because I'll be doing something. This is me getting warped into something. Probably have ADD if I'm being honest or ADHD. I'll get so sucked into something. I'll see a reply, read the rep a reply, and then immediately put it down and go back to what I'm doing. And then by the time I get back to the reply, it's been 12 hours. And I'm like, ah, I don't need to answer this anymore. And that's bad. That's just not good. So I want to get better at communicating with you guys in that respect. Um... I know I, I either like, love, or reply to most YouTube comments, or I just address them in the 10-minute mailbag, but this applies to there as well. I have the YouTube Studio app on my phone. I get every single comment as it comes in. I want to get better at, at having conversations with you guys. Though, again, I think I'm pretty transparent as is. I, uh, I'm going back here, and, and this is not a, a, a shot at any other content creator by any stretch, because I, I appreciate, respect, and admire so many of you. I like to think that I'm pretty friggin' accessible. 
I am a lot more accessible than some other content creators. And again, that's not a shot. Everyone lives their own life and chooses to do this a different way. I'm a fan of this game and of baseball who makes content. Just like you guys. I'm pretty accessible. But it doesn't mean I can't be better at it. If you guys want to reach me, you know how. But I want to improve. And then, this is such a stupid, kitschy, nonsense bullshit. The last thing I put under improve is everything. Ha 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 I'm so stupid and creative. It's just like when you see somebody on Christmas or, or New Year's Eve and say, see you next year. Ha, ha, ha. 12 hours later, it's next year. I, I just do think improvement should always be something you shoot for. I am a student of what I'm doing here with content creation because I am not an expert. I say this a lot. I'm stunned I can get all of this shit to work and record and the gameplay and the sound working all at once every time I go live or every time I hit record. So it's stunning to me that I've gotten this far. But I can always learn. I want to get better at understanding tech. I am not good at understanding when issues pop up. If I have a sound problem, it takes me hours to fix when really it's just one button I got to do. I, I, I struggle with a lot of that because it either goes in one ear and out the other or I just don't process the information. So I want to get better at that. I want to get better at a lot of things. Content creating, um, creativity, a lot of stuff. So everything. I want to be better at everything. And then the last thing to talk about are our two goals for 2024. And again, there are no numbers attached because I, I don't think it's always healthy to attach numbers to things. Yes, it's good to shoot for something and like know the, the, the hurdle or the benchmark you got to climb. But like a lot of people look at a numerical goal as a finish line. And like if you get there six months ahead of time, you kind of get complacent and stop. I don't like that at all like we hit partner six months earlier than i thought and we fucking kept going because my goal was to just reach partner it wasn't just to stop at a thousand we reached partner and i was like all right let's blow this shit up and we kept going so my goal in 2024 is to grow our community this is not my community this is our community so much again of what happens here is because of what you guys talk about ask me about or interested in I give the people, or I try to, give the people what they want. What you want. Um, you guys are not like faceless idiots to me. Like, I, I, I've made legit relationships with some of you guys. And I hope to make them with more of you. And you're not just like faceless internet zombies. Like, I know how a lot of you guys individually operate based on how I read your comments. I know some of your individual interests at like a personal level. And I appreciate that. But I still want to grow this community and, and have more of those people join in. And then lastly, I want to further establish my niche in the community. I do think it's already pretty clear that I'm the not heavy editing, call it as I sees it podcast guy. Probably. But I'd like to make inroads more with my Whiteboard Wednesday Maybe there's a future in which gameplay can thrive on this channel, like true gameplay. I haven't really figured out that formula yet because I've realized other people do it better and that's why I let them take care of it. So when a lot of you guys suggest gameplay videos, like real true gameplay videos, I kind of, I take a step back because I know that's not my thing. That requires a lot of editing that I'm not good at. It requires a different style of recording that I've yet to master. But I want to further carve out the niche of what I do well. And what I do well, I think, is reflect the opinions and the concerns of the every person in this game. I think so. Maybe that's me blowing smoke up my own ass, but I like to think I'm a pretty normal person. Representing other normal people. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think this little exercise that we just did, that I just did, was valuable for me. This was important for me not only to write down, which I did, but also talk about. I think this is what sets the baseline for what 2024 becomes. You know, they say getting that first like thousand, two thousand subscribers on YouTube is the hardest. I've done a lot of research and reading into growth and analytics and just trying to understand. From there, growth can come quick. 
And I am not expecting. I never expect. A a literally every time I get a new subscriber, even now, I'm like, ooh, a subscriber. Like, one subscriber makes me smile. But I am promising to you all now that if this channel continues to blow up, if we ever hit 5k, 10k, imagine we hit 10k, if we ever hit 10k, somehow by the graces of Jesus Ramon himself, bigger than that, what you're getting here in this environment, in this community, is not changing in terms of its authenticity. Content will always change, right? New ideas will pop up, some things will become impossible based on what the game provides us, um, but I'm not going to change. Because I know what got me to this point, and I respect you all too much to, like, become a douche and change. So, um, that has been this very different podcast episode. I know it's not one that you guys probably would expect from me in terms of, like, I usually just talk about the granular MLB The Show stuff. We really don't have that this week, anyway. But I appreciate transparency from others. And so I wanted to give you guys a peek behind the curtain of what I've been thinking about this, this last week or so. I wanted to use this last week to reflect, not just to take a step back from content, and I did a lot of reflecting. In a good way, like a great way. Um, it was nice. It was really valuable. And this is some of the stuff I came up with. So that will do it for this episode of the show, the podcast. We will be back to our normal, fun conversations of content and such next week. I just want to reiterate again that 2023, in many ways, was one of the best years of my, my life. Um, both for completely unrelated reasons and because of everything you guys have helped me accomplish. Um, I, I sometimes don't really know how to describe it to people. There are still some people who are close to me who don't know th about any of this. Um, but it's been really cool to share my passion with everybody. Truly. Um, and I look forward to doing even more of that in 2024. So thank you guys for humoring me in this very self-reflective episode. You guys mean the world to me. So does this sport. And uh, let's go kick ass in 2024. Hope you guys enjoyed your holidays. Hope you had a great New Year's Eve. A safe one. A healthy one. A happy one. And let's go, uh, let's go do some stuff this year. Love you all. See you next time.